Hi, I'm Dale LePage. And I'm Tina Marie Billing. Welcome, Welcome to, to New, New England, England Pride, Pride TV. TV. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride, show us. You've got New England pride. Mm -hmm. New England pride. I would like to present Broken Tail Rescue. Broken Tail Rescue is a 501c3 nonprofit foster based rescue organization dedicated to the rescue of unwanted and abandoned cats and dogs in urgent need and in danger of being euthanized. Broken Tail Rescue's goal is to responsibly rehome these pets while working on educating our community on responsible pet ownership. Please contact Broken Tail Rescue at 774 314. 2520 or go to info at brokentailrescue.org. Thank you. New England Pride TV is brought to you by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, Joseph Gonzalez Dofre, Boston Wedding Photographer, Paul Chase and Interior Design, Nuovo Restaurant. Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery, Fallon Health, The Queen's Cups, Escape Game Twister, The Fireplace Room Restaurant, Art Reach, Electric Haze, Bull Mansion, Ellie's Pet Barn, and Next Level Pet Care. Hey kids, we are back with more New England Pride TV. Once more, I bring you interesting, fascinating people who are doing great things for the community. And if you are a fan of New England Pride TV, you're no stranger to James Duggan and Yolanda Walker. Now, one thing I want to get across is um, you are here to talk about Worcester's first LGBTQ film festival called... QFlix. Yes. Which, I, first of all, I love the name. Thank you. Um, now, QFlix originally started where? Philadelphia. And how'd that come around or come about? There was a film festival in Philadelphia, an LGBTQ film festival that ran 19 years. And then the organization that ran it died on the vine. And there was going to be no oh. festival in Philadelphia. It ran for 19 years 19 and, then just, and then just kind of like fizzled out just, or just was done? The leadership walked away. Okay. And the problem with that was they didn't prepare for leadership. Okay. So they weren't prepared for transition into a new team. Okay. So when that festival died, mm -hmm. I went to one of the original founders and said, Philadelphia is too big not to have an LGBTQ plus film festival. And we started QFlix. And so did you come up with the name? Yes. Which is brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I love that. Um, so when did you start, when did you kind of take over then? Five years ago. Five years ago. And what's the response been in your Philadelphia branch? Philadelphia has been phenomenal. We have grown in numbers. We've grown in days. Um, we just moved to a new festival headquarters. And um, next year we're going to continue to expand it. Now I'm, curi I'm very curious when it comes to things like this. That, like this is a very uh, big deal for our community to have an LGBTQ film festival. And um, how many people are on your committee? I mean, you seem to be, you know, the uh, president in charge. Well, <laughs> what do we have? Um, Ten or eleven people on our committee, and then we're soliciting host committee members now and sponsors. Now, what made you choose Worcester, Massachusetts as your second location for this film festival? We looked up and down the East Coast. Um, I had relationships in Worcester, so I was familiar with the city. And um, I was impressed with the renaissance that was taking place downtown. 
Yeah, and it, I, it is pretty remarkable. And I felt that QFlix would be a perfect fit to grow with the city. Now, uh, the first time QFlix came to Worcester was last year? Last September. Last September. And you took over the st stunningly beautiful Hanover Theatre for the Performing mm -hmm. Arts, who are sponsors of our show. Thank you, Hanover <laughs> Theatre. Uh, plug for the Hanover, <laughs> right? Um, and when you first approached the Hanover Theatre to have this kind of film festival, how many, how many days did you uh, think about having? How many days did it go on? Four days. Four days. Is, yes. it, is it going to be four days again this year? It will be four days again this year, and hopefully it will be five days next year. Now, how many, how many films get shown per day? Um, it varies depending on the schedule. There are 15 time slots throughout the festival. Oh. We fit about 35 films within those 15 wow. time slots. I had no idea. I could only make four last year, but I'm, I'm, I, was, I, I loved what I saw. And, uh, wh and all of the films that you show for the film festival, are, um, are they submitted to you? Or do you go looking for them? It's a process where we submit, people submit to us, and we go seeking out. Okay. We hear about films from other festivals. Right. We want them for our festival. We know distributors, we know filmmakers, but people also submit to us. Uh, and one of the things that I loved uh, last year was some of, some of the actors that were in the film. Uh, they, they, they come and, and they um, take part in your film festival, which was so wonderful to see because I thought the movie that uh, I'm speaking of was great. It was, the, it was about uh, two, two high school kids. Um, one was, oh, was very good. It was yeah. very good, and I actually saw good. it again. I, th I think I saw it twice. It was so good, and I and I loved it. And the acting was fantastic, and and funny, and fun. And, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it was so mm -hmm. so good. Um, now, when is the festival happening this year? October 11th to the 14th. Okay, and um, it's happening also on I think somewhere around National Coming Out Day. Open at night is National Coming Out Day, which is brilliant planning. Thank so you. bravo to you, that's that's clever. Uh, can, I know a lot of the things are kept secret, but um, a few of the movies you can let us know are going to be pl playing. Correct? Yes. Okay. A few. Shadowlands. Charlie David is the director and actor. Wait a minute, Charlie David. I know that name. Yes, Charlie David is from Dante's Cove. Yes, yes. that's how I know the name. Yes, Charlie will be at the festival this year. And if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken, I think he actually hosted a travel show. Uh, he was the host of a travel show. I, I, watched, I liked that. Yeah, in Canada, I think. Yeah. Yes, great. Canada, yeah, yeah. From Canada. Is he from Canada? Yes. All right. Uh, so he's, uh, he's the director and actor in Shadowlands? Shadowlands. Shadowlands. Can you give me a little Shadowlands plot? Is a, Shadowlands is a trilogy. Oh, didn't know that. So it um, starts in an early time period, and then it's... it's next trilogy is another time period with the same souls. Like a reincarnation kind of thing? So is, is this sci-fi? No. Okay, all right, okay. It's fantasy. Okay, <laughs> all right. It's fantasy, yeah. which, who doesn't fantasize about Charlie David, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's, he's not just beautiful. I, I, I know. Um, so you've got Shadowlands. Now, it's a trilogy. Are there all three movies, or just one out now? Or it's the trilogies. It's, it's the trilogy within a movie. Within the movie. Yeah. Oh, even better. Yeah. Uh, so you got Shadowlands coming up. What else? What else do you have? We have a couple of shorts. We have a beautiful woman's film, Blindsided. And did you find that, or did they reach out to you? We found that from Philadelphia. That was a Philadelphia filmmaker. Oh, wonderful. Now, are there movies that get buzz, and, you, and you're like, we've got to check into this, or we've got to. Yeah, there's a long list of films that um, I'm in love with okay. that are hard to get because they're owned by film studios or distributors. Oh, or, okay. So they're harder to get for the festivals Yes. than uh, indie. Would. Right, right, right. Now, I, I want to uh, touch a little bit on you, uh, Yolanda. You um, are the executive producer or uh, associate producer. Yes, I of am. Of QFlex. Yes, now, as, this of, is a, as of today. It's this a is very a, new role. A new title for you. I was, I was going to bring that up. Now, how did you get involved with QFlex? Well, um, last year I'd heard that they were coming around. I really didn't know anything about it. Um, my wife and I, we just decided, you know, let's check it out. So we checked it out. Um, we were very pleased. Um, it's something that Worcester has never seen. 
Um, you know, we never had anything like that around here. So, you know, we thought, why not go support? Right. Uh, we went for the first uh, night of the showing. We had seen, I believe, two movies. Um, and we absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and I think, I'm not sure if we approached James, and we had said, you know, we love the festival, but are there any women movies? You know, no lesbian movies. Um, so he had said, yeah, we do have a few. So we came back the next day, and we had seen one, and we came back the third day, and we saw <laughs> another one, and uh, we were hooked. We were hooked, and uh, you know, I'd, 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 I believe I'd asked, you know, if, you know, how can I be a part of this? You know, this is gonna be big. This is gonna be big, and this is really good for Worcester, and I wanna be a mm -hmm. part of it. Um, so he had mm -hmm. said, you know, I'll give you a call, you know, next season, and you know, we'll, you yeah. know, see where it goes from there. And uh, he had called me when they started having meetings this year, and I'm part of it now, and I absolutely love it. Absolutely. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for Worcester, um, and I can't wait to see the lesbian films that come out with this uh, festival as well. Great. Are you looking for sponsorships from? Yes, we're okay. looking for corporate sponsors yep. and personal hosts, individual hosts. All right. So personal sponsors, individual hosts, you know, this is James Duggan, this is who you want to. Uh, unfortunately, we have like 45 seconds left. I wish we could have 10 more minutes at least, but we're going to get the uh, website out there, we're going to get the Facebook page out there, we're going to get the dates again, and one, two, three, go. The dates are <laughs> October 11th to 14th, 2018. The website is qflixworcester.com, and the Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is at qflixworcester. All right, fantastic. So if you want to find out any more about the LGBTQ Film Festival, and you know what, it's it's not just Worcester County, we had people driving in from Boston too. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. From all over yes, actually, from Rhode all Island. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so this yeah. is truly bringing the community together. So high five on that one. Good for ah, you, yeah. Great, great. All right, thank you so much. We will be back with more New England Pride TV right after this. Hey kids, welcome back to New England Pride TV. You know, we always try to get inspiring uh, people on this show, and Lord knows we've had so many. And again, we bring you some inspiring people because right now, my guests are Linda Lloyd and Dana Lloyd, and they are the executive director, actually owner, and the vice president of um, Angel's Answer, which is, I know you as uh, angels and backpacks or right, right. Yeah. okay so it's called angels and backpacks to me yep Be and I was first introduced to you I think on my radio show yes all right yep. and you blew me away I had a food drive for you yes, which you went did. really well wonderful. Yes. Um, Very well let's tell our viewers at home uh, about how you started this why you started this okay. and how far you've come okay all right all right so we started back in 2011 when the tornadoes came through, Munson and Brimfield, and I have always been interested in the plight of people in need all my life. So when the tornadoes came through, we, uh, I was called the food angel and we put together thousands of dollars worth of food and we put bags together, brown bags, out to go out in the field for the people who were affected by the tornadoes and that started me back then and then my dad was a veteran in World War II so I got to to know anything you have to experience it right. so I knew hunger right. Right. from my dad being um, in my formative years in the VA hospital so I, like I knew firsthand was like so, so you, then you I were wanted witness to, to what was going exactly. on and, and, the, and the great need totally totally so when then, you first started um, to organize the food drive which is yeah. for the tornado victims right. how did you do that um, well, I just went out and went to all different agencies and talked to them, and everybody was so incredibly supportive there during so, that So you weren't event. using the big social media platform you have now? No, no, okay. I went to, uh, it was 2011. Okay. So then I went out to um, different stores, and they were, uh, you know, the, that whole event was so people-oriented. We were the first responders when it happened. And that so got like, the ball rolling. That got the ball rolling, and then... You know, my brother had said that when he was in second grade, he would come home from school and there was nothing in the refrigerator except like uh, mustard and bread. So mm -hmm. he walked home from school, mm -hmm. no one was home, mm -hmm. he had a mustard and bread sandwich, walked back to school. Mm -hmm. And he told me that, and you know, I remember that, and I wanted to do something in the future. And that stuck in your mind because... Kids are I, our future. I know you, 
as the the angel for right. the for the the public school department right. basically. Yep. Because you have been um, putting into schools food pantries. Yep, totally. We have one in uh, Western Worcester County. We have a food pantry in the school. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Kids in the Journey program, the last four years, put the backpack bags together for us. And um, we want to make sure that we cover backpack box that we put together, actually boxes of food to go home over school right. vacation. Right, that's what I wanted to get to. I was yeah. trying to get to that point. So you make sure these kids that you know, they're not just kids in need, they're families right. in right. need. totally. Totally. We never know. Like, we're in in touch with school counselors mm -hmm. and the police department even, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll call us and say, we have someone, a mother, a single mom, or someone in need, can you help us? And should we dig right in? And, and they literally in? have nothing to eat. Nothing at but all. They might they have bread. And, right. yeah, yeah. yeah, nothing. Now, you may, and you make sure that there is, uh, these these boxes contain, like, Proteins, vitamins, yeah, carbs. Totally. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. they're balanced. Right, we want to make sure. As you can get. Yep, totally. We want to make sure that over school vacation, that um, if they don't have school lunches, we're covering that because they wouldn't right. necessarily f have access to school lunches. So we also in the winter months provide hats, mittens, gloves, scarves, and all that to cover that whole thing right. and toiletries and you know, anything that there's a real need for. So you've implemented food pantries in these public schools. How yeah. many? Uh, We're in five area schools. Mm -hmm. We're um, putting together a program coming up um, in the fall with Christian Community Church in Sarai Rivera, the Worcester yes. City yeah. Councilor. Yeah. We're yeah. working on a future project with her yeah. in, in the school area. We have a pop-up food pantry that we run um, every two weeks for the um, Puerto Rican families that are here from Hurricane Maria, and we feed them. Uh, we've sent boxes of food to Venezuela because... Now, forgive my ignorance, what is a pop-up food pantry? You bring your, you bring your um, table and you set up outside and the families come. How do they find out about it? Through so. um, uh, the Puerto Rican Community Council and oh, support okay. people through the... Okay. Through the yeah, Oksana, uh, Luxana okay. is a woman that works with Sarai Rivera. <coughs> so you like do that. pop up food pantries from the victims uh, from Puerto ha Rico? From Hurricane Maria. Maria? Yep. And so we're just, whatever comes up, um, you know, we, we just, we're always, we'll be there if there's a need. Now, one of the things that I wanted to stress to our viewers at home is when I first found out about this amazing couple, how they started, and what they do to help their community. It's, it's, I mean, it's, your community is huge, first of all. Right. Um, I wanted you to know, our viewers, how easy it is to get involved, because these food pantries um, have a specific list they give you of things that uh, will last right. and are desperately needed. Totally. <laughs> and, right, to, to, yeah, desperately totally, needed. Right, like, totally, really. Um, so is there is there a list of things that are needed? Does it does it update? Is it on your it's Facebook page? Specifically, it is, but specifically, it's like proteins, like it's chicken, chicken, canned, canned, canned chicken, canned, canned, chicken, chicken, canned, chicken, canned tuna, tuna. The Barilla um, in um, another company, Hum Hormel, makes complete meals that yes. you can buy uh, in the store. And uh, ravioli. I, 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 I myself went to. Um, you did. I went to Shaw's and you and loaded us up. I, lo I loaded you up. And you know what's funny is if um, I was like, if I have a food drive, am I, am I the only one going to be contributing? And for the I did it for like, I think, two weeks, yeah. I think. And for the first like four days, my, the food that I bought was the only food there. And I was like, oh my God, nobody's listening, nobody cares, whatever. Then that. it started rolling it in did. like an avalanche. So and it was amazing. It was great. People, are, <clears throat> people it was can relate. People can, and one of the things that I wanted to, to um, get out is you have so much donations coming in, you were looking for a space to, to rent, to, to hold the food. Right, we have a 3,000 square foot warehouse in Worcester County in the western part that we support through my wow. retirement check yep. from my being retired so that we put together, we have um, rent and electricity that we pay for it and we're looking for as you always corporate sponsorship corporate sponsors because and, um she yeah. she she just glossed over it very quickly any money these two people have 
it goes into the Angels of Backpacks. It's totally, 100%. It, it, this is a nonprofit. There is no, you don't no, get paid no, for this. Never, this is never had a, strictly nothing. out of the kindness of their huge hearts. Now, why don't you tell our viewers at home, um, websites, Facebook okay. pages, anything you okay. can. So our website is angelsanswerinc.com. And my email is angel underscore aid at yahoo.com. And Facebook is Angels Answer Inc. and right. Angels and Backpacks program right. as well. As usual, we brought you some incredibly inspiring people. Thank you. We'll be right back with more right after this. Hi, it's me, Amy T. I'm Amy T's wife. I'm just here for emotional support. She is capable of performing across the country however to do this segment for you guys she's painfully shy and a little awkward possibly the reverse maybe painfully awkward and a little shy um so i'm just here for support um i do want to explain that i do have resting face i'm not sitting through this and completely miserable it's just my face um so beautiful, huh? thanks honey so okay back to you so <laughs> Tell us what's going on. <laughs> I am super excited and grateful to be a part of New England Pride Television uh, with my segment called Experimental Comedy Therapy because I believe humor is vital to a person's well-being and it's also ECT, the acronym of how I try to live my life. Be responsible for the energy I bring into this world, practice compassion and tolerance. So I'm super excited. I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a stand-up comedian. I perform all across the country. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for mental health awareness. Um, I speak for the National Alliance of Mental Illness. I'm a peer-to-peer -peer facilitator. I'm a peer mentor. Uh, it's an organization that is near and dear to my heart since I was diagnosed bipolar disorder eight years ago. I was featured in This Is My Very Boston. Check it out if you can. It's an amazing organization. It really is. Um, I'm eight years sober, so I would love to hear from my sober folks so that we can build a stronger support system within our communities. Um, as you can see, I'm very happily married again. Um, for the third time, I know. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's a joke. Not, not <laughs> well, it's a not joke. a joke. She really has been. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this one, this one's, this one's stuck. Um, we've been together for about a little more than eight years. We've been married for five in, in Martin Luther King Day uh, this January. And best thing I ever did. True. Hashtag fact. <laughs> Hashtag fact. Enough about us. Tell us what the segment's going to be like. What are you going to What are you going to bring? Uh, I think uh, I would like to uh, show the audience just kind of how I live my life through lots of playful humor. Maybe some interviews with some of my friends. Um, I would like to do um, butch makeovers. I have a couple of my friends that are recently single, and I think there would be a perfect opportunity to maybe bring them into the millennium. Um, I think. They fun. need some updating. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. fun. Um, well, I want to do some pay it forwards. I want to do some that. For the first thing I would like to do is a 30 day challenge. Candace and I are already on day three of a 30 day fitness challenge. Started in May. Yeah, so it's, we've done it three times over the course of the last three months, not in a row. Mm -hmm. But our, <laughs> our goal is to do a 30 day random acts of kindness fit, uh, challenge so that we can, you can see how easy it is to be nice every single day. And it'll be interesting to see how people perceive and receive kindness. So that will be interesting. Yes, I think that's gonna be a really, really fun uh, next segment. Until next time, this is Amy T with ECT. Bye. Thanks, Thanks again. Hey kids, really quickly, I wanna give a couple of uh, things out to you. First of all, um, I don't know if you're aware, if you're following the conversion therapy ban, but Maine governor, LePage, and for the millionth time, I am no relation to Governor LePage of Maine. I get that a lot. I am absolutely no relation to this man, nor do I believe in anything he believes in. Um, he vetoed the ban on conversion therapy in Maine, so um, that's terrible, uh, Governor LePage. That's pretty crappy, um, being kind, because it's TV. Um, and I didn't know if you knew that a transgender woman won the first Miss Universe pageant in Spain. That's pretty groundbreaking. The other thing I wanted to tell you, and um, this is very important, is we're about to begin a ramping up of the outreach program and Freedom Massachusetts is looking for employees and they pay up to $15 an hour for full-time canvassers, this would be an opportunity that interests some of the followers of New England Pride TV and the viewers. 
ages 18 and older. And I would like to tell you that Freedom for All Massachusetts would like you to contact them for a job. And you can reach them at freedomforallmassachusetts.com. It's that simple. If you're looking for a summer job, Freedom for All is paying an awesome wage for doing some canvassing. And what you'd be doing is making people aware of the November 6th transgender vote where they're trying to take away equal rights for transgender individuals. And it should be equal rights for all. And it's that simple. So on November 6th, you're going to vote to keep up equality for your transgender brothers and sisters. So remember that. You've got to vote. It means everything. We'll be back. We have come to the end of another episode of New England Pride TV. I'd like to thank our guests today for informing us on such great things that are coming up, great organizations. Um, one of the things that I want to really stress, and I'm going to be stressing it on every show until November 6th, is please vote yes on question three. Uh, our transgender brothers and sisters deserve equality like everybody else. Amen. Amen. So we're going to end the show the way we always do by saying, please don't be afraid to shine your light. Because you might be lighting the way for someone in need. Until next time. Thank you. You got New England pride, show us You've got New England pride Stand up, shout out, show us You got New England pride, show us You've got New England pride Mmm, -hmm. ba 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 hey.